My next guest is back in action against Joe Selecki in the lightweight division at UFC Fight Night on October 2nd. It is Jared Gordon Flash back here on the program. Jared, how's it going, man? I'm doing well. How you doing, James? Doing awesome. Uh, right off the bat, happy belated birthday. What did you get up to? Uh, well, you know, I'm in the middle of camp, so <laughs> couldn't do much. Uh, but it was a good day, you know. Went to the pool. I trained all morning, went to the pool, hung out with my girl and trained again at night so um it was a regular day but you know i got a lot of birthday love from everyone and uh you know it's just great i'm grateful obviously you know to still be doing what i love growing older hopefully wiser uh and uh but yeah it was it was a good it was a good birthday any cake or is that off limits i guess for the for um i had a Quest Bar, bir- that was a birthday cake flavor. Oh, cool. My fiance put some candles in it, and I ate about a quarter of it, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> there you go. But Have some real cake the after that, the fight. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, the thought that matters. Uh, For sure. Um, we haven't seen you since February. Um, obviously, we're talking about a fight here in October. Was this by design, or were you trying to get in there a little bit sooner? I mean, I was trying to get in there sooner, but, you know, they were telling my manager that, they're booked, you know, especially in, you know, the division lightweight, you know, I was at featherweight, uh, back to lightweight now, you know, obviously those divisions are stacked. So, uh, they were telling me that, you know, they gotta get, I guess they gotta get through the roster before they can just keep giving everyone else fights. So, but you know, it's all right. And there's no need to rush. What I've learned is like, why rush, you know, when I could take some time and, def, you know, get everything laid out and figured out and here we are. And, you know, it's only a couple of weeks away. So I imagine the decision to go up to lightweight was the UFCs because I know in the past we've talked, you feel better fighting it at featherweight. I'm guessing it's just because of the missed weight for the last fight. Is that sort of what happened? Yeah. You know, I make mistakes and um, it sucks, but. I got to do what I got to do, you know, and, and there's pros and cons to both weight classes. You know, I'm like an in-betweener almost. Uh, if there was a 50 pound weight class, 150 pounds, I, that would be like perfect for me. Um, you know, when I fought Chris Fishgold, I made 45 on the dot. On Fight Island too. And, we talked about this. I mean, if any cut yeah. would have gone wrong, it would have been you that know? one, right? Yeah. And like no coaches, all the craziness that went on. Uh, and I made 45 on the dot and I was on the same schedule as I was weight wise for this last one and it just wouldn't come like i sat in the sauna forever and it wouldn't come out i got in the bath it wouldn't come out and, and then it was just like all right you know and uh at that point i started feeling really really bad and you know i missed but it is what it is and i, I just it's what the the universe or god wanted for me so here we are back in lightweight and you know it, it is what it is and i'm just gonna I got to adjust and that's it. Do you think there's any uh, possibility of you going back down to featherweight? Or do you think that's it at this point? Cause I know it's been, it's kind of happened a couple of times now, as far as them telling you to go yeah. to lightweight and whatever. Right. So I think that's it, you know, okay. I think that Fair 55 enough. is where I'm probably going to stay. Let's talk about your opponent here. Joe Selecki, tough guy, 11 and two record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Um, he's a jitsu. Gra- he's great grappler, obviously. Um, you know, he, he likes to get a hold of people, take them down, and and try to get the submission or just or control them. Uh, it seems like, you know, he uh rather be there than, you know, standing in the in the center and trading or, or striking. Um, but, you know, I think that uh, – I think that my grappling is just – is right there with his – if not, I think my ground pound is better. Uh, but he's a great jiu-jitsu guy. You know, it's like a puzzle. I gotta, I gotta figure the puzzle out. It's like, uh, you know, fighting like a Damian Maya or fighting a, you know, someone that you know wants to wrestle or, or take you down. So, um, obviously, I'm preparing for that, preparing for the grappling sequences, and you know, I'm hoping to. Uh, do well in the feet and if it goes down to the ground get up and you know continue continue to fight and push the pace um 
when it seems like when the going is is going well for him, he does well. Uh, but in adversity, you know, I think that's where he. I'm not saying he struggles there, but uh, if a guy can defend and defend and and you know keep pushing the pace, I think that's where the fight has to be won. You know. Absolutely. Um, how much do you factor in sort of level of competition? This is something we always talk about with you that you look at your record, people see four losses, but I mean, one of those is the current lightweight champ. I, I think we can agree here that you're probably the toughest guy that, that he's fought so far. Uh, how much do you feel like experience will, will play into this uh, fight in terms of who you fought and who he's fought? I mean, you know, he's, he's been in there with some pretty good guys. He's just beat Jim Miller, which is a big you know notch in his cap. Um, and yeah, I think that I've definitely fought I fought more people. I have more fights, and I've definitely fought some some killers. And I fought Diego Ferrer, who's ranked. I fought Charles, um, you know, and then I fought Silva. And my other my other loss to Jeff Lentz, which you know, some of these like those were I got injured in both those fights, mm-hmm. um, you know. And I think like when you look at at the at my losses, it's like oh he's been TKO'd or or KO'd four times, but when I fought Lentz, I was winning that fight. I got injured and they stopped it between the rounds because my eye was really swollen. When I fought Ferreira, I wasn't like unconscious. I just, it was a weird fight. I got kicked in my nuts twice and I almost cut my finger off like a month and a half before that fight. I shouldn't have actually fought that fight. Yeah, we talked about uh, that. That was a whole crazy yeah, craziness heading into that one. Yeah. yeah. The Silva fight, I tore my hamstring off my pelvis in the second round and I wound up getting finished in the third in a fight that I was winning. And I was even winning on the judges' scorecards in the third round. And it just went down that way. Uh, Charles caught me. You know, I should, I, z- I zigged when I should have zagged, and he caught me, and, and that's the way it was. But I believe that, you know, it was his time, you know. Uh, look look where he's at now. He, after me, he beat Kevin Lee. He beat Ferguson. And then he finished Chandler, my teammate Chandler. So, I mean, like, is that really something I should be mad about? I don't think so. Obviously, I didn't want to lose to him. But, you know, I think it was his time, man. Uh, you know, you think you know what you're doing and then like things happen and you're like, wow, like I have to adjust. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that getting in there with those guys, you know, I, I fought Charles in front of his hometown in Sao Paulo. I had no one there for me besides my girl mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, my, my corner men. So like, you know, the whole crowd screaming at you, I think it's definitely an experience factor. Uh, and I know I could push the pace and I know that. If I got to fight, I could fight. If I got to be smart, you know, I could be smart and, you know, but if I have to bite down on my mouthpiece, I know I can do that. So, um, I think it, it will play a factor of the experience, the, the experience factor. Uh, and I'm ready to get in there and show what I've been working on. You're in an awesome camp. Sanford MMA doesn't get much better than that. As far as bodies in the gym, who are you mainly getting to work with yeah. going into this one? Dude, it's been ridiculous. We've had so many other guys coming in too. Um, by the yeah, way, I think you right started now. a trend. I'd sorry to interrupt you there because like, it seems like when you went there, all these other fighters came over and I know like you, you helped Brendan Allen come over there. Like how yeah. cool has that been that you kind of were like one of the first, at least recently to come over. And now there's just an influx of like everyone training there now. Yeah. It's so many different guys. We have, uh, I forget how to pronounce his first name, Ludvoit Klein. Yeah. Yeah. Who just fought or is he's sorry, he's, coming up? Yeah. He's a freak. Great spark training partner for me. Uh, I'm training with, uh, Tofik Mustiav, he's the Ryzen champion, 55-pound champion. He's in the gym. Uh, we got Saul Rogers, who's fighting Georgie Karakarian. Yep. He was supposed to fight Adam Piccolotti, but he fell out. Uh, getting a lot of work with him. Christo Jagos, he's fighting Armin. So you can? Uh, yeah, he's fight- uh, so I've been getting a lot of work with him. Uh, you know, Chad Skelly, he's fighting Trezano, I think, coming up soon. I don't know if they announced that, actually, so... But no, I think I think it's out no, there. You're a, safe. You're good. Okay, there's a million guys that are like in and around my weight who I've been getting great work with. Today we had an amazing wrestling practice, uh, and obviously we have some of the greatest coaches: Greg Jones, Kami, Barzini, Jason Strout, and you know the boss Henry Hooft. So, and then there's a million guys that are there coaching alongside of you, like our teammates Gilbert Burns. You know, we have so many different guys and they're Robbie's fighting uh, Lawler's coming up. Uh, so just being around these people, being in that environment, you know, you're going to get a hard push every time you get in there. Uh, it's been 
it's been definitely one of the better things I've done for my career for sure is moving to Sanford. How's the cut going? Oh, it's, I'm on point. Actually, my nutritionist came in last night for these last four weeks. Uh, so we're thinking I should lose another six, seven pounds in, in the next couple of weeks. And then when I get to five weeks, just, you know, cut the rest. So it should be, should be a breeze. I'm usually heavier than this for 55 because in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make 55. So yeah. like, I kind of like, you know, F off on the eating. I kind of cheat a little here and there. And then I want him coming into five week, a little heavy. And, you know, I've never missed for 55, but, um, this time I'm definitely way ahead of the schedule. I'm leaner than I normally am going into 55 and, uh, it's been great. As far as your corner, who's going to be in there with you on uh, October 2nd? I got Jason Strout. I don't know. He's been on like every card for Sanford lately. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, He's actually he's a, one of he's been one of my coaches since I was like 23. He cornered me in like 14, 15 fights. Uh, I got Kami and uh, Nick Lentz cornering me. Nice, that's cool. Was J- who's the guy that was in the background of our last interview? I was trying to remember who that is. Was that Jason? I was trying to remember. Did he have long hair? Can't remember. It was someone else who was in the interview, and I know he's a close friend of yours or something. I was trying to remember who it was, but probably Jason. Yeah, could have been that you know, guy. He's my. He's my coach, but he's more like a brother or dad to me now. Yeah. Even though he's only 11 years older than me. But, uh, yeah, he's just always been there for me. Awesome striking coach. And we just are chemistry together. It always works. And it's just we hang out like every day. So it's been – it's awesome having him here. How do you see the fight playing out on October 2nd? Man, I have a feeling it's going to be a bunch of grappling sequences uh, until, until I break Joe, you know, and – uh, I think he's a great guy and he's a great fighter and he's a great grappler. Uh, I just feel, you know, it's my time, you know, and, uh, I just turned 33. So now's the time to really, you know, put the pedal to the metal and, and keep him, keep him moving. 33 years young, man. I'm going to be 37 this year, believe it or not, which is crazy. I know I look a lot younger, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's all <laughs> good. You didn't think we'd get into this interview without talking about the fact that there's going to be a Sopranos movie, your thoughts on oh, this. And apparently it's, what is I it? Knew- get- Gandolfini's son is is uh, Gandolfini's son. I think is playing uh, Tony, right? He is. So it's weird. My friend, my my late friend Sergio De Silva, he uh, passed away last December. Was James Gandolfini's personal assistant for ten years. What? I didn't know yeah. this. You know, I was at Sergio's uh-huh. fight when he fought in Bellator NYC. I don't know if you know that. So I know him. I, yeah. I'm quite familiar with him. So he was James's personal assistant for ten years. His mother was his cleaning lady, and then he would bring she would bring Sergio to to, to work, and James would you know have him oh go to go do this for me, go do that for me, and then he just just turned into a it just turned him him into being his personal assistant, mm-hmm. and uh, you know James did everything for him. He he put him through college, paid for his college, he went to private school. He he bought he helped him establish a, a private chauffeur business. He got him share as clients kevin garnett all these different clients and i met michael through sergio uh and he used to come to all his fights james used to come to his fights too um and obviously um i was watching the sopranos last night james (laughs) (laughs) of course of course so and it's amazing because it comes out the night before my fight yeah so i'll definitely be watching that pre-fight the night before, and I am just stoked. I hope it lives up to the Sopranos series, and I'm super excited to see what Michael has done. Um, but they have one hell of a lineup, too, as characters in there. And I just think it's, you know, all Sopranos fans have been waiting for some sort of prequel or sequel, whatever you want to call it. So I'm excited, super excited. Same here. I, I can't wait. Uh, I'll definitely be checking it out. And uh, you're right. I'm probably due to watch The Sopranos again. So you know what I like watching season three during the holidays? Because it, it takes place around Christmas, of course. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it counts as like a Christmas movie, but it, it's definitely up there as well. Um, <laughs> one last thing before I go. Your buddy Bilal Muhammad's been killing it with his podcast. It's really cool to see him sort of branch out and do that. Have you ever thought about doing anything like that yourself? And, you know, maybe talking about substance abuse or things of that nature. I know you're doing some work with that already. But is that something you thought of where you could, you know, use a platform, your platform? platform to to help others and maybe in the form of a podcast you thought about that at all 
Uh, you know, I have, and I was recently talking to my girl about starting like a YouTube channel or something like that. And, and, uh, you know, creating, creating content. Um, sometimes I get like down on myself though, because before I got into UFC, I was like, you know, my story obviously isn't, you know, inspiring, whatever. And, but I feel like, you know, I get down on myself because sometimes, you know, the world sometimes doesn't care about stuff like that, unfortunately. Uh, and I have to remind myself why I fight and like why I, I want to help people. Um, you know, you see certain people, they get so much publicity and, and, uh, become the face of UFC, uh, just for being charismatic and talking shit and, and, you know, being like a loud flamboyant person, which, you know, I have nothing, you know, against that. If that's how you're going to propel yourself. Great. Uh, you know, nothing against like, you know, so Sean O'Malley, just as an example, yeah. you know, he smokes pot, you know, he's smoking pot on his, you know, on his Instagram and his videos and people love that shit, mm -hmm. you know, and here I am like, you know, I get just today, I had someone, I had commented on one of Gordon Ryan's videos and some kid was like, oh, you're just a junkie. You're, and I was like, in my head, I'm like, fuck, what the fuck, is, what's wrong with people? Like, and, um, but yeah, you know, I think that no matter what, I have to continue to uh, fight for, for what I'm fighting for and help people. And, and yeah, it's definitely something that I'm thinking about, but then like, I think like, Oh, is this, is this going to gain traction? Do people really care? Like the people that are not affected by this, like, do they care? Uh, so it's like a battle in my head. Like, should I all of a sudden, you know, if I went back to, sometimes I think like if I went back to the mindset that I had as a criminal, because I did a lot of really bad things in my life, you know, and I acted like that on, in front of people instead, would I get more traction? You know, if I talk shit, if I was like a thug or like a badass or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. like, would that help me more? But then like, I know that's not what God wants for me, you know? So it's a tough battle in my head, but yeah, it's definitely something that I, that I thought about that I think about, you know, I see Bilal, he, he gain, he's gaining a lot of traction. He's, he's uh, on the desk with UFC now. People love him and I'm super happy for him. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely something I thought I think about and something that I should probably do. Uh, but yeah. Well, I think, so, listen, I'm going gonna, gonna to intervene here. You should do it. It's, I, I don't think a lot of that's fake, you know, like, and we could do a whole podcast on this on itself about social media. And the reason that guy said that to you is because he saw something in you that he is not happy with. And so he's using that as, as a way to get against you, but not a chance in hell that guy's going to say that to your face. I mean, this, this is unfortunately what social media has set us up with is that you can know. literally do whatever you want on, online and there's no re repercussions, but that's, he's suffering that person who wrote that because he obviously needs to say that to help himself. And so that's why, and, and you talk about the O'Malley oh. stuff. Um, um, again, I'll keep this short. A lot of that is that generation because people are yeah. think that this is the, the the route to success, but a lot of that's just phony. It's not real. Like a lot of yeah. these, you know, you do all this stuff. Do you think those people are, you know, billionaires or living long lives? No, they're not. They're people who get themselves into trouble. So I think with you, it might be a slow build. Will Harris, our mutual friend, he's a guy that's, you know, done the slow build with his content and all this stuff. And it's, it's the same sort of thing. He recognizes that he could go interview Connor or these other guys and get more clicks, but he sees the investment in it and that a lot of these guys that he talks to end up going on to big things but you got to play the long game i think that's what would be good for you too with the whole uh you know your your audience and using your platform to do that but what do i know i'm just a guy behind the camera here so there you go well uh, i think you have a fair you, you know what's going on and you know you've been doing this for a long time and it's it was kind of the same with you 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 oh, i didn't take so an easy business. route exactly yeah i no, know you did not yeah no and look at you like you're always, you're still a, a face that everybody knows so um yeah i think you're right and uh, i think i'm gonna look into it for sure Jared, always appreciate the time. We went way over like we usually do. Uh, anyone you want to yeah. thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. <sighs> Not really. <laughs> Just plug your social media I and love, then all the sponsors are on there, right? Then you're good. Uh, Twitter J is uh, J Flash Gordon on May. Instagram, Jared Flash Gordon. Uh, thanks to all my coaches and family. I love you all. <laughs>